This is a $9 graphics card. I'll be overclocking far past this limit. It's the HD 7470, a display adapter that was never intended for gaming, but I was able to get a few to run. So stick around to find out how I did it and if you should too. To provide some context, this card came out in 2012 as part of the HD 7000 series that competed with Nvidia's GTX 600 GPUs. But the 7470 wasn't built with performance in mind. It's an OEM card and shipped in pre-built systems as a display adapter. Even when it was new, it wasn't powerful and was never intended for gaming, but with the power of overclocking, it might run them slightly less terribly. This is the HD 4870. It's a pretty small card, so there's not a whole lot to take apart, but I'm gonna tear it down to the PCB and replace the thermal paste. I got this card in a lot of 31 GPUs I paid $90 for, so it cost me about $3. And to put it nicely, it has a lackluster amount of power. The Keiko's processor it uses only has 160 shading units, along with eight texture mapping units, four render output units, two compute units, and a core clock of 750 megahertz. But at the very least, it came with a full gigabyte of GDDR5 memory, which runs at 900 megahertz. So gaming or really doing anything beyond displaying a video is gonna be a disappointing experience. Well, that's interesting. There's no screws holding down the cooler. It's just these crappy little plastic bits. How the heck do I get these things off? But it's not all bad. The 7470 does support DirectX 11, so it can probably start most modern games. It also only has a 27 watt TDP with no external power connectors. So you can throw it into just about any system without having to get a new power supply. The video outputs are decent as well, and it comes with one one DVI and one DisplayPort version 1.1. Oh, finally I got the heatsink off. The cooler is not even metal, it's plastic. How does this dissipate anything? Now, I wasn't able to find a lot of pre-builds that use the 7470, but I did find this one. It has a quad-core A8 processor, eight gigs of RAM, and the aforementioned graphics card. It seemed normal, but one guy was not happy with his purchase and said that he received the mobile edition of the card. But in the picture, it shows a dedicated GPU, not a mobile chip soldered onto the motherboard. So either he's a little confused or there's someone out there soldering mobile chips onto a dedicated GPU PCB. I got some good old HY510 thermal grease here by this company. I'm not sure if it's good, but I hope it is because it's what we're going to be using today. All right, we're good to go. Let's hope I didn't kill it and we'll throw it into the test system. The test system we're going to be using has an i3-4130, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and Windows 7 running on an SSD. None of it is particularly powerful, but anyone who's going to be using this card isn't going to be pairing it with the latest i9. Now, I didn't really care if this card made it out of the video alive or not, so I pushed it as far as possible. First, I used GPU-Z to make sure I actually had a HD 7470. Then I downloaded the drivers and freeballed the overclocking. Long story short, but the fastest I was able to get the card to run while still being mostly stable was an overclock of 125 on the core and 50 megahertz on the memory. I couldn't get the memory running as fast as I wanted it to, but spoiler alert, it doesn't really matter and the card is still garbage. But without further ado, consider subscribing. Now let's get into the benchmarks. At first, it didn't seem like the card was actually that bad. I started off by running CSGO in 1080p with the low settings where it got about 20 to 30 FPS. Clearly, this wasn't ideal, so I lowered it to 720p and it got about 45 to 55 FPS. It felt playable. I mean, there was no stuttering or frame tearing and it was stable throughout testing. Now, I know 720p isn't what most people are looking for, but it still was able to run. Unfortunately, this trend didn't last long. The next game I played was Beam and G Drive, and it quickly became apparent that I set my expectations too high. And 720p with the low settings got an average of 22 FPS. Yeah, it's a simulation game that you don't need high frame rates to enjoy, but this card was pushing the lower limits of playability. I also tried out 1080p, but that went about as bad as you'd expect. I don't even have notes on it, except the words f***ing trash. It quickly became obvious that most new games weren't going to run well, but as a last effort, I hopped onto some Valorant to see how that would run. My internet was having some issues at this time and as I teleported about the map in 1080p with the low settings it got an average of 50 FPS. So you can run Valorant on the car, just hope that you have a good internet connection. Next I hop into some older games because newer ones were consistently running bad. Dishonored was next and I actually had to lower the settings quite a bit for this one. Even crappy integrated graphics can run this game, but I had to turn it down to 720p loud to get it running well. I mean well is a relative term, but it is comparatively better than the 22 we saw in BMG Drive. The 7470 managed to get a whole 37 FPS in this title and was playable, just not as good as I hoped it would be. And this continued. I tried playing Borderlands 2, which released in the same year as this GPU and Dishonor did, and once again, I was disappointed. And 720p with the lowest settings got an average of 29 FPS, but it also seemed like the card was starting to die. 
The screen would turn brown, then black, and stop outputting to the capture card only to pick back up a couple seconds later. This was likely due to the aggressive overclocking, but either way it seemed like this card didn't have much longer to live. So the last game I ran on the card was Rust. It took ages to load into the server, and when I eventually did, it was really bad. The game was running in 1152 by 648 with a 0.5 render scale in all the lowest settings and got a pitiful frame rate of 22. At this point in testing, I kind of foresaw this failure and wasn't surprised, but I still felt let down. It was apparent that the card was trash. Useless in every sense of the word, and if you've ever had the displeasure of using it, I'm sorry. I also tried running GTA 5, but couldn't due to not having a compatible sound device, and when I tried running PUBG, it never made it past the loading screen. So not only is it not powerful, but it's not even compatible with a lot of games. 2 out of 10, I never want to touch this thing again. And that about sums it up. You get what you pay for, and for $9 you can buy eWaste marketed as a display adapter. It's unremarkable, virtually useless, and a disappointment to its HD 7000 family. I don't think I have a single good thing to say about this card, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jane Knight Discord server in the description, alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to it. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.